Let's talk about what a boxing legend, an actor, and a dictator's son have in common. They're all running to be the next president of the Philippines to replace this man, Rodrigo Duterte. He's been a hugely popular but polarizing president. The elections aren't until May next year, but this race is already pretty wild. There's even some family drama. Duterte's daughter, Sarah, is in the mix, and so is this country's infamous political dynasty, the Marcoses. It's not just between political parties. This is between warring political families. It's like you're watching a telenovela. So who are the main candidates? Who stands the best chance? And what's behind all the family feuding? There are a lot of moving parts with these elections, and it all adds to the political intrigue. The main races are for president and vice president, but it works a bit differently from other countries because the votes are separate. So candidates can stand together as a team, but they don't have to, and they may not even end up in power together anyway. We can elect a president under one ticket and elect a vice president under another ticket. There are congressional elections happening too, and President Duterte is running for a seat in the Senate. It's a way for him to stay in politics because his six-year presidential term is up and he can't run again. Now, when it comes to the race for president, right now there are really four main candidates. First up, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who also goes by the nickname Bong Bong. He's the son of the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos and one of the front runners. Hangad kong ibalik ang mapagkaisang paglilingkod ng magbubuklod sa ating bansa. Manny Pacquiao, the world famous boxer, is also in the ring. He's been a senator since 2016, but this time he's up for the top job and is promising to fight corruption. Pacquiao supporters are really the Pacquiao fans of the boxing hero. <laughs> and that's it. They vote for him only on that basis. Then there's Isco Moreno. He's a former teen idol who's now mayor of the capital Manila and a self-styled centrist, and he hasn't lost his moves. Slide to the left, slide to the right, crisscross, crisscross. Isco Moreno is very active on social media. He dispenses medical advice and medical um, stories in his YouTube account. And finally, Lenny Robredo. She's the current vice president, but has been sidelined by Duterte. And in this election, she's actually seen as the main opposition candidate. She's been pushing for human rights and is someone who would signify political change if she won. But that's a big if, because in the past, that platform hasn't been very successful. In 2019, that was what the opposition did. They kept on hammering against human rights violations. The uh, extrajudicial killings that were connected to the Duterte administration, and they lost big time. But here's one big twist. The current president's daughter is also part of the story. Sara Duterte Carpio is the mayor of Davao City. At one point, the polls had her as the favorite to replace her father, and many expected her to run for president. But she didn't. Sara decided to run for vice president under a different party, and she allied herself with Bongbong Bong Marcos. She wants to be portrayed as independent of her father. She wanted her own people. She wanted to run on her, her own terms. With Sara Duterte and Bongbong Bong Marcos, you've got the latest installment of a long-running political saga. Their families have swung between supporting and opposing each other for decades, all the way back to the 1980s, when Rodrigo Duterte's mother was a leading figure in the revolution that got rid of Ferdinand Marcos Sr. When it comes to Philippine politics, there are no permanent friends or allies, only permanent political ambitions. Now for outgoing President Rodrigo Duterte, political allies are going to be important. 
and that's another feature of these elections, because Duterte is facing investigations for his signature policy, what he called his war on drugs. My campaign against drugs will not stop until the last pusher and the last drug lord are It was a violent campaign to crack down on crime, targeting everyone from big gangs to drug users. And the police were encouraged to shoot to kill. Official figures show that more than 8,000 people were killed, but the Philippines Human Rights Commission and other rights groups say the real number is much higher, more like 27,000, because it wasn't just the police, it was vigilante killings too. There are people and groups inside and outside the Philippines pushing for accountability and justice, including Maria Reza, the journalist who just won the Nobel Peace Prize for her work to expose human rights abuses, as well as the International Criminal Court, which has launched an investigation. Many people see Duterte's run for a Senate seat as a way for him to retain political influence and protect himself. The primary interest of the Duterte is to shield themselves from uh, possible prosecution, especially by the International Criminal Court. His family himself his allies and some cabinet members are going to be facing cases and investigation if somebody else actually sits in the presidency and somebody who is not allied with them. So it is critical for them to be able to control power. Now, one thing that surprises a lot of people, particularly outside the Philippines, is that despite Duterte's war on drugs and all those thousands of people killed, he's still popular. He has a 67% satisfaction rate. And this is relevant when we think about who's most likely to succeed him. It explains why Bongbong Marcos is a leading contender because he's seen as the same type of strong, charismatic leader as the outgoing president. Bongbong Bong Marcos is playing up the idea that the time when his father was in power was a kind of golden era that he wants to restore. I'm the son of the longest lasting president who brought the Philippines into the modern world. All of the successes that he had, all the roads, the schools, the educational system, I would like to restore that. But the era of Marcos Sr. was a time of military dictatorship and martial law marked by corruption, brutality, hardship, and the extravagance of the Marcos family. You might have heard of Imelda Marcos, the former first lady and her 3,000 pairs of shoes. But here's another twist. The Electoral Commission could still bar Bongbong Bong Marcos because of an old conviction for tax evasion. We're looking at the possibility of um, Marcos Jr. actually being disqualified. Now, winning the presidential popularity contest is one thing. Another is doing the job. The, the Philippines is facing one of its worst economic recession in decades. We're talking about, you know, more than 4.5 million Filipinos unable to work since the pandemic broke out, a tourism industry practically decimated, an education system in crisis. The Philippines, uh, really is in dire need of good leaders who will lead us uh, out of the pandemic. Just how well the different candidates fit that description is of course a matter of opinion, but there's everything to play for. And most experts agree the political drama is nowhere near over. It's still anyone's game. <laughs>